Hello everybody. My name's Steve Matthews. Uh, you can find me on YouTube under Teeth of the Lamb. Or you can find me on Facebook under just Steve Matthews. Today I'd like to go over some observations that I've made with the total lunar eclipse and the blood moon. Uh, the one that occurred on January 20th of 2019. It's taken me a few days to get this video together because during the eclipse we were under such cloud cover that it, I could only get intermittent pictures and videos uh, right up until the moon turned red. Then after that it just poured the rest of the night. At the end of this video you'll find all the images that I was able to take. The one that's on the screen now behind the tree, I, I shot that. I thought it was pretty interesting, a little spooky. <laughs> Today, what I'd like to do is go over some animations. Our objective is to get the shadow to start in the lower east of the moon. For the duration of this video, you, the spectator, will be taking the vantage point of the sun and shedding some long-needed light on the subject. The earth will be moving between you and the moon. Remember our objective is for you, the sun, to cast light on the earth that will start a shadow down in the lower eastern corner of the moon. Bear in mind that the official narrative is that the earth is passing between you, the sun, and the moon in perfect alignment. From your vantage point you're also going to have to keep the moon lighted as it passes behind the earth. Just a real quick note on the graphic that I have displayed. The official narrative is that the sun appears the same size as the moon because it's 400 times further away. So in their graphics, what they do is they move it about 300 times closer, you know, as opposed to the 93 million miles away. They do this because it's the only way they can trick the spectator into thinking that the sun is capable of producing a penumbra. To produce a penumbra, it requires a light source much larger than the object blocking it. If this were reality, this is what you would see. You wouldn't see this because this can't produce a penumbra. And without a penumbra, you can't have a 2,159 mile wide object cast a 70 mile wide shadow. With that said, let's get on with our animated demonstration. You won't find them giving you an animation of this, only still pictures, because they can't reproduce it animated. Remember, you're the sun and you're casting the light on this. I've made the earth somewhat transparent, so as it passes over the moon, that should be where the shadow is. And you see it's coming up, and in the lower left-hand corner, I've got a, actual pictures of what we saw and everybody saw it a little bit differently from their perspective. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. I don't think there's a problem with it. Pretty easy to reproduce. Well, I think maybe we better stop and take just a little closer look at it. So what we'll do is we'll see which direction things should be going. Okay, the first thing we need to note is that the Earth actually moves in a counterclockwise rotation around the Sun, so that'd be to your left. And we moved it to the right in the last diagram. And west is to your left and east is to your right on this side of the Earth. And on the back side of the Earth, east is to your left and west is to your right. So we have to keep that in mind. The moon, when I was viewing it, was in the east, and it would be for anybody. So it's all right over on that side. We've got to get that shadow to start in the lower eastern corner of that moon, the lower left-hand side. Uh, I don't see any way to do that. We have to keep the Earth going uh, in a counterclockwise rotation, which is moving to the left. Oh man, this is going to be hard. Uh, we'll just go right over it, but that's completely wrong. 
and we've traversed the whole day. So it appears that we can't reproduce that shadow moving in the proper direction without moving the earth the wrong direction in a clockwise rotation around the sun. Uh, so I'm ready for everybody to start calling me a moron and an idiot and and I'm stupid, I don't know physics, I don't know calculus, so make your own video and show me how that's done. I want one of the brains out there to give me a animated demonstration of how that's possible to get the shadow to go across the moon the way we saw it. And uh, I don't want still images. We'll all be waiting for an animated demonstration of how that works and make sure you keep things going in the proper direction and make sure it's from the vantage point of the sun. While you're at it, in your animation, show us how the sun keeps the moon lit when it's in perfect alignment behind the earth. Now that we've shed some light on this problem, uh, feel free to leave your links in the comments below to your animated demonstration of how this all works. I'm going to show you some pictures that uh, Pat Shank put together and he's got a group called Shank the Globe. You might want to take a look at that. And while we watch the uh, pictures that he's taken of the uh, eclipse, I'll tell you one more time what I want. What I want is somebody to create an animation that correctly shows how that shadow could possibly go this direction across the moon and make sure you keep the earth going the right way and all that. I propose that there's simply no way to animate this because it's an impossibility. Not only is it impossible on a globe, but it's also impossible on a flat earth. There has to be something else involved in creating this eclipse shadow. And uh, I don't know what it is, but uh, it's not what we're being told, that's for sure. It's not the Earth passing in front of the, or between the Sun and the Moon. Another issue I'm having with the eclipse is the vast amount of countries that were able to view it. North and South America, Europe, Western Africa, Central and Eastern Africa, and Asia. Here's another report that says, totality will be visible from the Americas, Greenland, Iceland, Western Europe, and Western Africa. Sky watchers in Eastern Europe and Eastern Africa will witness only a partial eclipse. I don't really know what to think of it yet, but I'm sure that somebody will criticize me for even trying to think about it. But if I come up with anything, I'll pass it on to you. It might be nothing. Another observation that I'd like to pass on to everybody is that I noticed the Sea of Crises, the round crater at the top, well it stayed fixed in one, one location throughout the whole duration of the eclipse. Normally I've noticed that the moon, well the face of the moon will make a clockwise rotation and in that many hours it would make as much as a quarter of a turn and I have pictures that show that. In these photos that I took uh, you can see that it's moved quite a little bit. This is over a span of five hours. And here again watch the Sea of Crises, the round crater, and you can see this has moved a lot. It's all in the same day, about ten and a half hours. Well this about wraps up the points that I have for today and if you want to stay tuned and see what uh, animations people put in the comments feel free to like and subscribe and uh, here are the photos that I took and videos of the eclipse up to the point of totality before the weather changed. Thank you all for watching and have a darn nice day.